Welcome to the Mikey Likes You podcast. I am Mikey who likes. You are you who is liked. Simple. Simple recipe. That's how it works. Welcome to 2023. A brand new year. And of course, many of you, statistics show that adults in this country, it's like 63%, I believe, make a New Year's resolution. And a lot of them are fitness-based. Actually, more so for women, I found uh, interesting that uh, considerably more women are making their New Year's resolution um, weight loss or health-based, whereas men are making considerably more New Year's resolutions based around their career or their achievements. Um, that, that aspect of it does make sense. Um, me being a man, I'm not, I'm not sure if those of you out there who don't personally know me are aware that I am a man. Um, you do get driven, you know, your ego gets fueled by, uh, what you do for a living, how good you are at that, how good people perceive you to be at that. And then subsequently how much money you make doing so. But, um, you know, either way, that's beside the point. Most people are making a New Year's resolution. And the disturbing part about that is that nine, 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 nine percent of adults in the UK and the United States of America, nine percent of them actually stick with their New Year's resolution come day 364 of whatever year you have made that resolution for. So we're talking about millions of people <laughs> are making a resolution to improve their lives in some way. If you're making a resolution to make your life worse, I that's, you're fascinating to me. That's the person I want to talk to. If you're like, you know what? I'm starting smoking. In 2023, that's my resolution. I'm going to start smoking like David Lynch or something. I believe that it's a good habit to have. I'm going to start smoking. I like it a lot. He started smoking at like 35. Fascinating. Most people want to lose weight, quit smoking give up gambling. I don't know. You, you there's a there's a handful of like very common ones and it all is based around this idea of how you can improve your life. My problem is is that you're seeing 9% of people actually committing to it, right? Because it's all this very fine very fine-tuned <laughs> Thank you. It's this very kind of limited single habit thing that these resolutions are based around. And that's why they usually end up failing is because, you know, I can tell you as an alcoholic, as a drug addict, it's like, it only takes one little slip before that floodgate is open and then it's over. If come January 28th, you have a cigarette, you, you know, you get a buzz on and you're like, one of and next thing you know, you wake up in the morning, it's over that you're, you're, you're back to a pack a day by the end of that, that morning. And I think it's kind of, I don't want to say childish because that, that seems a little bit too negative and insulting, but it does, it seems so limiting. It seems so, um, primitive to have these common ideas like I'm going to lose 20 pounds this year. I'm going to commit to giving up gluten. I'm get, uh, I'm going to quit smoking. Because the way I look at it is you're not defined by these habits, right? And you're not a new person. As I record this, it is January 1st. I am the same guy I was January 1st, 2023, as I was December 31st, 2022. I have a new outlook on things. 
and I am going to continually strive to be a better me. But I don't need a date on the calendar to try to remind myself to do that. And if you say, look, I'm giving up smoking, which is, of course, an incredibly valuable it's an incredibly valuable and meaningful thing to want to do and to commit to doing. And those who give up on um, smoking, uh, my hat's off to you because it's incredibly difficult. That's not what I'm saying. But what's the point of saying on January 1st of 2023, I'm quitting smoking because that's my New Year's resolution. If every day of the year you're also punching your wife or, you know, increasing your massive already out exorbitant debt or you're miserable or you hate yourself. When you really detach yourself from this really kind of superficial idea of I'm quitting smoking, which again, I'm not trying to minimize that. If you're still smoking, you should try to quit. It's incredibly uh, dangerous and it's very unhealthy, but it seems like it miss, you're, you're kind of getting caught up on the wood and missing out on the forest. Uh, because the perpetual forward movement of just being a constantly improving human should always be our look on things. And being someone who bases this podcast around kind of health and fitness, I see so many people that are like, I'm overweight and I'm losing weight. That's my New Year's resolution, whatever it may be. And... <clears throat> That's so that's such a limited view of what to do and why you're doing it. And then you end up starving yourself. And then sure enough, by February, you've given up on everything. And then you're probably more miserable than you were before. And you're even more shameful about the weight that you do have on you. And that weight's going to increase. So I don't want to be confusing and say, I'm not encouraging you to lose weight using the new year as a jumping off point if you feel like you need to lose weight. I'm not discouraging you from putting on muscle mass if you're overly thin and that's something you really want to do and you're using January 1st as your jumping off point. What I am saying is that don't limit it to saying I'm going to put on muscle mass because that's going to be awfully useless if you're not taking into consideration the comprehensive kind of being, if you're not looking at yourself as a fully fledged out, already beautiful, perfect creature that just needs to continually expose the magic that you have inside you. that energy, that beauty that already exists. You don't need to change who you are. You just need to continue the process of investigating and looking through that overly cluttered closet that is your soul to find and then subsequently expose all those beautiful positive things that you see in your mind, in your mind's eye when you vision, when you envision yourself how you want to be. That lean ripped version of you that's wealthy and happy, it is, it already exists. It's already there. You just have to continue working on finding it. And so I I guess it's just a language. It's a mind frame that I, I really dislike when it comes to looking at New Year's resolutions as new year, new me. 
No, 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 no. You're not a new person and you shouldn't strive to be a new person. You should just continually strive to uncover that idealized view of who you already are. If you're 40 pounds overweight, 50 pounds overweight, whatever it is, that thin felt version of you, it, it, it already exists. You just, you can't, you can't see it yet. You know, Michelangelo said that, you know, the, the, the statue that I'm making, it's, it already exists. I just have to chip away at this lump of clay to expose it. And that's exactly how you should look at your life. Um, and, you know, kind of tactile, very objective habits may be a useful tool into exposing that idealized view of you, but they are not the job itself. They are the screwdriver, they are the hammer, they are the nails, but they aren't the job in and of itself. So I just want to warn against the idea of limiting yourself to these, these kind of very specific New Year's resolutions. Because you may say, I'm going to lose 20 pounds this year. Fine. And that's, again, I, I certainly, if you feel like you need to lose weight, I encourage you to do so. But none of these things, quitting smoking, making more money, losing weight, they're not going to mean fuck all if you're still unbelievably miserable at the end and oftentimes it can leave you feeling incredibly hollow when you do achieve something like that only to realize it's not solving your problems because we are we are very multifaceted very complex very comprehensive beings and all these things that we kind of look at and examine especially when it comes to making New Year's resolutions are really symptoms of things. Small, teeny little symptoms. And I, I, I mean, who amongst us hasn't achieved something that we always dreamed of achieving? And there's that initial feeling of achievement and then self-congratulatory, oftentimes deserved, justified, self-congratulatory kind of behavior but then at the end, you realize, well, I'm still that same dude. I'm still that same gal. And that can make things a million times worse. And so I say, let's, instead of new year, new me, new year, continue to find the best me. That's already in you. It's already there, man. It really is. We got to stop getting in our own way in finding that idealized view. Because, look, I, I think it's insulting for me to then right now tell you, I, I know what it's like to look in the mirror and be a, a large amount overweight or whatever. And so, because I, I've never struggled with that. I, I, you know, I've certainly been in a position where I don't feel I look my best and then work on getting there. But I've never been someone who was profoundly overweight or, or, or profoundly thin and uh, needed to bulk. I, I was always very pedestrian and ordinary when it comes to my, my physical appearance. But one thing I can talk to you about with great honesty and great understanding is addiction. And I talked about it pretty extensively um, a couple podcasts ago about how I made it to 20 years of sobriety and it actually almost made me feel worse because I thought I could check off that box and it was going to fix me. And in many regards, it did make my life better. Of course, not drinking and using drugs every day is going to fix a lot, but it didn't fix me. It didn't fix the mal the internal malaise. It didn't fix my 
dialogue with myself um, because it was, in fact, just a symptom. And there's a reason why only 9% of people commit to a resolution and then make it 365 days. It's because you're really looking at a surface issue. And I think that exhausting all your focus and energy on off, you know, these, these surface issues, even if they're serious ones, like I said, even if they're, you know, if you're hundreds of pounds overweight or if you're smoking cigarettes or drinking daily, um, these are certainly things that should be focused on, but you can't stop looking there. You can't end your vision just at the cigarettes or just at the bottle or just at the the food or just at the sex addiction or the gambling. It, it is always going to be representative of something much larger that exists from your head to your toe and all the way down to the cockles of your heart, meaning it's, 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 it's your soul. And so I, I again, I, I want to reiterate, I don't want to seem like I'm being either confusing or talking out of both sides of my mouth. If you want to quit smoking this year, I think that's great. And anything I can do or anything anybody else can do to help you, I think they should. And, and we all should work together to make ourselves better and focus on the things that we think we need to focus on. Losing weight, putting down the bottle, giving up on sex addiction, whatever it is. I'm not trying to say do away with these tawdry things. I'm saying don't put those eggs in that basket because when you suffer specifically and exclusively to deal with these things, you're oftentimes kind of taking away from your ability to deal with the more serious and oftentimes more important and more transformative change that you can make. And that is to give up on looking outside of yourself for these small things that you can change, thinking that that's going to be this key that unlocks everything. Um, because it's not. Because the non-drinking, non-smoking, um, honest, uh, the, the, the version of you that doesn't cheat on your spouse or whatever it may be, that version, it, 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 it exists right this second, not today, not next year, right now, as you're listening to this, as I talk to you, that version that I know of myself, it, it, it's already there. I just need to get out of my own way and allow that person to be there in the same way that you do too. Because if you do lose that weight, with that sole focus on that limiting single change, there's a really good chance that you're going to end up a thinner, unhappier version of yourself or a non-smoking, more miserable version of yourself. Give up, man. Give up on the idea of new year, new you. No, no, no. New year, same you. Because that perfect version, you know, that, the, the, you're perfect as you are. You just got to figure out how to let yourself know that. And start acting that way. Right? In a nutshell, I want us all to start looking at these things from the inside out instead of the outside in. And it's a lot harder. The reason I wanted to devote this entire podcast to this idea, it's a lot harder now because we have so much more external um stimuli we have so much more intake of like these external ideas because of social media because of youtube because of 24-hour news cycles um we're constantly inputting external stuff when we should be really focusing on 
looking deeper inside to let that stuff unfold because I, I know it sounds like hippie horse shit, but that idealized you, it already exists. It's just buried under a bunch of old sweatshirts and, and, and photos that you promised yourself you'd get rid of and a bunch of Christmas gifts that you never opened. And you you've got to just get to the bottom of that closet and find what you're really looking for because it's already there. It's not lost. It didn't get stolen. <coughs> you just got to clear away all those things that are obstructing your ability to get in touch with it. And when I sit back and I think about it, like really use that analogy, right? The idealized view is a family heirloom that you can't find. You know, it's if it's anywhere, it's in that closet, right? But you got tons of old clothes. You got uh, your jackets from a party you held that friends left there and you got kids toys and it's just all covered. It, the, the whole closet's a fucking mess. But that family heirloom that you're just killing to find, it's, it's in there. <clears throat> And I think that when we make these resolutions of like, I'm going to do A, B, or C, it's like going out to uh, the store and then just buying more shit, <laughs> right? You're like, oh, I'm going to go buy this dress because I know that this dress is going to fix everything, right? It's going gonna, it's gonna to be what I need to be the linchpin. If I get these shoes and this dress, it's going to be the linchpin to get my whole wardrobe together. And so you go and you buy it and then you're, and you're now you're adding more stuff to the closet when in actuality, the perfect dress is in your closet right now. You just can't fucking find it. It's already there. And that idealized version of you, it is already there. That thin, beautiful, honest, virtuous, responsible version that you always want to be. It's already in your closet. Just dig, you know, just dig and find it. Buying more clothes is not going to make it any easier to find that thing because you're just going to add a, add more and more to that closet to make it messier. All right. No more new year, new you. It's new year, more opportunity to get in touch with that already idealized version of you that exists right now, right this second. And change your mind frame and think that knowing that, know it, don't think it, don't kind of use it as some empty mantra because that's manipulative and it's, it's doesn't serve much purpose. Really know it deep down like that already exists. That version of myself that I look in the mirror at night and I'm like, fuck, yes, I'm doing it. That that's, it's already there right this second, right this moment as you're, it, it, it's already who you are. And I say it as someone who struggles with it just as much as you do. I'm not saying it like talking from my ivory tower. I just needed to give up on this. Like, well, if I get 6% body fat, fucking everything's going to be fine. If I, if I get this job or if I make this amount of money, I will be soft. No, 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 no. The fucking balling, shredded version of Mike is already here. I just got to stop getting in my own way and allow that dude to come out and if we attach ourselves to that mind frame and really believe it like i said know it don't think it know it the habits that need to kind of come into our lives in order for that person to be exposed they will come they will come to you and um i, I kind of wanted to button it by saying that's kind of the basis of when i work with people when it comes to health and fitness I always start by saying like, look, I'll be very honest with you. I can write exactly what you should eat in what amounts and exactly the reps and sets that you should do. And if you do this, you will lose the weight or you will gain the muscle. You will blah, blah, blah. But it's not going to solve anything. I want you to develop a better relationship with food, not to just starve yourself. I want you to develop a more... Um, comprehensive appreciation for taking care of your body so that you love 
going to the gym. You love the feeling of the struggle and see its benefit and can, can, can touch it. It becomes something that you're connected with. Sets and reps and an and a, a, a incredibly comprehensive diet of exactly what you should eat and when is not going to solve that problem because you'll follow that for two months or six months and you may get the results you want. But as soon as you let that go, as soon as that tethered, tether is pulled, you're going to be right back where you started from. And as those weight, as those pounds come back on or as your muscles atrophy slightly, as you get more busy, then it, it's just a vicious cycle that comes back with even more aggression and velocity. And anybody who is a cigarette smoker knows that you may feel miserable lighting up in the morning, but not half as miserable as you feel if you make it six months quitting and then start back up again because that first puff feels like fucking razors going down your throat. So by getting rid of cigarettes and stop hanging out with the people that smoke or stopping drinking in order for you to not have that buzzed casual cigarette, doing all these out external things to kind of curate a life where you don't smoke, it can last for three weeks, six weeks, whatever. But if you're not getting in touch with why you're beholden to something, what you're trying to feed, which is undeniably physically addictive, I get that. There's that aspect of it. But the disease of addiction is one. Uh, the only thing I can compare it to would be something like diabetes. Like it can always be there, but it doesn't really manifest itself unless you allow it to by overeating uh, sugary foods and things and not tending to your insulin levels. Because I know plenty of people who are genetically predisposed they have the disease of addiction but they just never allow it to manifest why because they've gotten in touch with themselves internally in a way that they allow that idealized view and they feel comfortable with who they are there's not that there's not the chasm between who they want to be and who they view themselves as that's when it starts to manifest you know and every single one of us has been, unless you're those, those horrible people who just can't gain weight, no matter how much they eat, every single one of us has dealt with like, oh, I'm 10 pounds over. I really got to get it together. I've been busy at work and the kids are driving me crazy and I've just been mindlessly eating, but I got to rail it in. Okay. That's a whole different story. If you're a hundred pounds overweight, it's not a matter of you having a bad diet and not extra. There's something else inside you. That is allowing you to get to that point. And I'm super sympathetic and sensitive to that. Because yeah, I'm a terrible bottom of the barrel drug addict and alcoholic. And I love drinking. I love drugs. But. I'm. I would never have allowed my disease to get to the point that it did. If it wasn't for the fact that I was so sad. I was such an incredibly self-hating, sad, miserable person. And I struggle with those aspects of my life now. It's gotten a lot better and I've done, the, I've done a lot of work. But I haven't had a drink or any mood-altering substances in 20 years. And that's great. But it wasn't until I was able to finally dig deeper and get in touch with what was it about me that thought it was a good idea to commit suicide and in this installment plan to punish myself, to hurt myself? What is that? What is that force? And there was no amount of meetings or rehab facilities or outside sources like judges and cops and parents. And there, there was nothing they could do that could help me get in touch with that. It, it, it had to be a personal decision. And there's no personal trainer on earth or nutritionist that can get in touch with what that force is that makes you think it's a good idea to, to, to want to cry at night because you're, you, you know you're punishing yourself.
you may be someone who engages in behavior that I find immoral and I don't want having to have anything to do with. You may hit women. You may uh, you may abuse your children or something. Okay, I like I'm I, I'm just using this as an example. You may not be. I'm just saying like you may be that person. But it doesn't mean that you don't deserve to find that person that already exists that doesn't do those things. And, you know, taking a pedophile and putting him in jail may prevent him or her from harming children. But it doesn't change the way that someone who every day that they're in jail is thinking about sexually abusing a child, right? And I know that's an extreme example, and it, and it absolutely is. But you may be the person that some people come in and they clean out your cupboard and they take out all the junk food from your fridge and then they follow you around and, 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 and your, your husband or your coworkers, they're all like, you have salad today, not, not uh, burger and fries. And then you lose a hundred pounds, but it, 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 it really means fuck all. If you don't fucking take that opportunity to remind yourself that you deserve to be a person who doesn't feel that way. And that's a lot of it. That's a lot of it. My, my rock bottom had nothing to do with any kind of crazy histrionic outside experience. I crashed cars. I uh, was emotionally abusive to people that I loved. I stole. I lied. I went to jail. I woke up in the morning with... Uh, a broken nose one time because someone beat the shit out of me. I woke up in, in someone's front yard not remembering how I got there. I did all these things and all these things that were very painful, but none of them had anything to do with the day that I decided that I was going to try and quit using drugs and drinking. The day I decided to quit using drugs and drinking and actually follow through with it was the day that I have, I fucking don't know why. I have no idea why. I was sitting on the edge of a bed in a shitty motel in Inglewood, California, holding a 40 ounce of malt liquor that I, it was the only thing I could afford. And I was watching horrible daytime TV. And I looked in the mirror and I said, I deserve to try. I deserve to have a life that I enjoy living. Somewhere deep within me, through all this horrible behavior that I was admittedly engaging in, somewhere deep down there was a person that deserved to live a life of happiness and joy. And for like a mo split moment, I just, I finally believed it. I deserved it. And that changed everything. I didn't have anybody. I didn't have a judge or a cop or my parents or my girlfriends or whoever say like, you have to do this or else there was no, I didn't crash a car. I didn't, uh, I hate to even say the words, but harm someone accidentally driving drunk or under the influence. I, there was none of that. It was some, at some, for some reason, there was that spark inside that said, no, 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 that the, the, the I, the real Mike deserves to live. And just for that moment, I believed it. And then I followed through. And then because of that, the drugs and the drinking went away. And I started to build upon that. So. My advice, certainly not. Again, I'm not someone who has it all figured out trying to tell you what to do. It's just a guy who has gone through it and is still going through it in many ways. And it's a work in progress. I just encourage you to don't look from the outside, trying to deny things to get in. Start looking from the inside to allow what's already in there to get out. 
Love you. Happy New Year. And in this crazy mixed up world that makes you think that nobody cares, remember, I do.